Hey everybody, Rob Mauer here. Welcome back to Tesla Daily. Today we are talking about some news that may be relevant to Tesla Energy. We've also got a report on Tesla's next generation FSD hardware, FSD beta version 11 full release notes, and a couple other software updates as well. Still no support to be found for Tesla stock down another 6.8% on the day today, closing at $167.87. The Nasdaq was down, but just 1.1%. I know everybody looking for reasons. The reality is there's always going to be a lot of them, some that we know about, some that we don't. I do think that Elon's focus on Twitter is causing a lack of confidence from some investors at the moment. And I think China and margin concerns continue to weigh really heavy. We've gone in the last three to six months from huge backlogs and expanding margins that have really good implications for forward earnings to now a situation where we've had price cuts, diminishing backlogs, which completely flips the question around forward earnings from how high can margins go to how low will margins ultimately end up being. Elon's actions, I think, are adding to uncertainty, but that uncertainty is already present in the fundamentals based on all the things that we've already talked about with China demand. Now, exacerbating that even further is the uncertainty around COVID in China. Beijing has seen cases rise pretty rapidly. They're putting in more restrictions on businesses and schools. And over the weekend, China also marked their first COVID-related death since May. So everyone waiting to see what happens here as China has tried to make some moves away from COVID zero, but that's obviously going to increase the spread. China with 1.4 billion people, how are they going to react to what could pretty quickly become massive numbers after having pushed the COVID zero policies and rhetoric for so long? So a lot of uncertainty there in China, both on production and demand. Can Tesla keep Giga Shanghai operating? If they can, can they even sell a decent number of those cars in China? in what is increasingly looking like a weaker market continually impacted by COVID. Those concerns just amplified by an uncertain macro environment worldwide, amplified by uncertainty around Elon Musk and Twitter. So a pretty painful period could continue to be painful this week as holiday weeks can be a little bit lower volume. It can be easier to push prices in one direction. People that have been in Tesla for a long time have definitely seen periods like that where shorts would jump on the stock during these holiday weeks. And this definitely feels like an environment that would be conducive to that type of trading. So we'll see. Of course, looking at the calendar this week, the markets are closed on Thursday and then closed three hours early on Friday. Prior to that, we will get the FOMC meeting minutes from the early November meeting. Those will be Wednesday afternoon. Prior to that, in the morning, we'll get the initial jobless claims and new home sales, which will both be pretty interesting this week. All right, first up today, I want to talk a little bit about Tesla Energy. We are revisiting a character from Tesla Energy's past here with Mike Cannon Brooks out of Australia. He's an Australian billionaire, founder of Atlassian, who you may remember because once upon a time, he and Elon had made a bet that Tesla could get a 100 megawatt energy storage system installed in Australia in less than 100 days. Tesla delivered, and of course, eventually this became the Hornsdale Power Reserve in South Australia. Well, Cannon Brooks is back in the energy news as of late, as he has been acquiring shares in AGL, which is Australian Gas and Light, the largest electricity company in Australia, with over 10 gigawatts of energy generation capacity. Cannon Brooks, via his fund Grok Ventures, has accumulated about 11% of the outstanding shares of AGL, and he's been attempting to drive some pretty significant changes within the company. And ultimately, this led to last week at AGL's annual meeting, four new board members put forth by Grok Ventures being elected to AGL's board. These four join a fifth that had been previously put forth by Grok Ventures and now constitute a majority of the nine board seats. Cannon Brooks commented on this and said that, quote, none of the new directors have any affiliation with Grok. What they do have is an acceptance of the climate science and the need for AGL to move from being a laggard to being a leader as fast as they possibly can, because if they don't, they're going to have their lunch eaten by other new players, end quote. All right, so certainly seems like positive news for renewable energy in Australia in general. Then there's a pretty tight Tesla connection with the entity that clearly has a lot of influence over this company with a lot of resources. Taking that connection one step further, it turns out that one of these new board members is Mark Twedell, who is the former director of energy at Tesla. So while this doesn't inherently mean anything for Tesla Energy, I think it's pretty clearly a positive, and I think it would be pretty surprising if we don't see Tesla Energy and AGL partner on a project in the future. We've definitely seen Australia act as a proving ground for Tesla energy storage projects in the past. Maybe this can serve to facilitate proving out some even larger scale projects. So I think that'll be exciting to follow. And then speaking of large scale projects, we've also got news today that Tesla has brought online a new 196 megawatt hour energy storage project in the UK. This project was done in partnership with a company called Harmony Energy, and apparently they brought forward the launch of this project a little bit 
It was supposed to be launched in two stages in December of this year and March of next year, but Harmony said they pushed the launch forward to, quote, support National Grid in efforts to provide stable and secure power to UK households over the challenging winter period, end quote. These challenges and risks, of course, heightened this winter because of the war with Russia and Ukraine. So always exciting to see those new storage projects come online. All right, next up, we've got a report on Tesla's next generation or hardware 4 FSD chip. Of course, Tesla designs these chips, but they contract out a manufacturer for them. So previously for hardware 3, they've been working with Samsung. There have been previous reports that Tesla has been looking to work with TSMC for hardware 4. And today we've got a report from Taiwan Economic Daily that TSMC is receiving orders from Tesla that they've replaced Samsung for the next generation, which interestingly, the report here will be produced on TSMC's 4 5 nanometer process. Now that part is in contrast to reports that we had back in late 2020 that Tesla was working with TSMC, but on the 7 nanometer process. So relative to the 7 nanometer process, this would be the next manufacturing generation forward. That would likely mean more expensive chips for Tesla, but also more powerful or more efficient at similar power. So maybe the previous report was wrong, maybe this current report is wrong, or maybe in the interim time period Tesla has reevaluated. I'm not sure how long it would take to redesign for a different process, but it's interesting given that this seems to be a little bit closer to cutting edge at their respective times, of course, than the 14 nanometer process that Tesla used for the FSD3 chip. So hopefully we'll get some clarifying reporting on this somewhat soon. Of course, Tesla didn't talk about this at all at AI Day, which was a departure from the original Autonomy Day, where Tesla had talked a lot about their design for the FSD chip. And then at AI Day number one, Elon had said that Hardware 4 was likely coming with the Cybertruck, which at that point was slated for the end of 2022, which right now is where we're at. So hopefully if that is still paired with the Cybertruck, we'll see that by mid next year. All right, next up, we do have more of the FSD version 11 release notes. We, of course, previously talked about the two first bullet points, which was Tesla enabling FSD beta on highway and then improved occupancy network recall and precision from 260,000 new clips. So there are only seven other bullet points in here and pretty understandable. A three pack here, I think that makes a huge difference for autopilot as we know it today. Tesla says they have added highway behavior to offset away from blocked lanes and generic obstacles like road debris, while also adding a smooth handoff between in-lane offsetting and lane changing. That blocked lanes one is nice. That comes up for me on my way down to Chicago with some of the lanes being intermittently open. And of course, offsetting for road debris, definitely something that is needed. Tesla says they have also improved lane changes to allow high jerk maneuvers if required to stay on route or to move away from lane blockages. So it can be a bit more aggressive when needed based on those previous changes. Then Tesla says they have improved smoothness at highway lane splits by being less strict about centering between lane lines and allowing lower jerk maneuvers where safe to do so. So it should be much more human-like in those scenarios. Most of the remaining bullet points on lane changes, Tesla has said that they have improved merging behavior by leveraging lane geometry and lane bounds, association and course map information, and better gap selection algorithms, allowing for a smoother and safer experience. They've improved speed-based lane change decisions to better avoid slowing down traffic in fast lanes and interfere less with navigation, and they've reduced sensitivity for speed-based lane changes in chill mode. Should definitely help with navigate on autopilot. And then final bullet point here, reduced latency of trajectory optimization by 20% on average without sacrificing behavior by leveraging numerical tricks for more efficient computations. Elon has also shared on Twitter some more information on version 11. He was asked about any updates. He said, making good progress still tracking to wide release next month. Of course, as we have talked about before, wide release has meant a couple of different things at different points in time. So he was asked if that means to those who currently have beta or to anyone who has purchased FSD and won't have to do safety score. And he said the latter. Of course, at first, that would still just mean in the US or North America. As for this week, Elon had previously said that they are trying to expand version 11 beyond just the current employees that have it sometime this week. So we'll see if that happens. With the current version, FSD beta 10.69.3.1, Tesla has stopped geofencing out downtown Toronto. All right, last couple of topics here. As we had talked about last week, the Tesla exhibit at the Peterson Automotive Museum in LA did open. Tesla put a little teaser of that on their YouTube channel, so kind of nice to see some of that footage. But probably the most interesting thing to come out of this is something that was spotted by Aaron Cash and some others on Twitter. That is that in the software on the vehicles on display, Tesla has Apple Music displayed as an app. So a lot of people have been asking for this for a long time. This vehicle does have version 11 software, so in some way it seems to be paired with that. 
but it does look pretty fully built out as it even shows how to log into your Apple Music account. So hopefully a feature that we see added very soon, maybe something that Tesla would save for a holiday update, as we know they like to make those ones a little bit bigger. Next, we've got a couple of recalls for Tesla that, of course, getting a lot of headlines. The first one, 322,000 vehicles, estimated percent of vehicles with defect, 1%. This is for vehicle taillights potentially not lighting up. Tesla has fixed this with an over-the-air update. Still, apparently worthy of headlines worldwide. This one seemed to get more attention than usual for some reason, perhaps because it coincided with a recall of 29,000 Model Xs for restraint control module calibration. You guessed it, this one also fixed with an over-the-air update. Now, this should be a good thing, especially as we contrast it with a story here shared by Tesla Audrey on Twitter, which is a notice from a Volkswagen vehicle showing that the installation of an over-the-air update is going to take six to eight hours. So, of course, what Tesla does with over-the-air updates is very impressive, but all the headlines talk about are the recalls. All right, that just about wraps it up. We'll just take a quick look ahead at the podcast schedule. So with the holidays this week, I will be traveling home for that. So most likely episodes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week, then probably off on Thursday and Friday. But I'll keep you updated on that if anything changes. In the meantime, as always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And we'll see you tomorrow for the Tuesday, November 22nd episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.